Texas football falls to TCU and out of the top 25. How the mighty Warriors have fallen. And of course, we are talking World Series Game 7 tonight. Don't go anywhere. This is the Halloween edition of College Crossfire. Woo! Let me explain why Aaron Judge is getting it. You can boo me all you want. I knew Texas was going to win, <laughs> right? and then one of the Texas team was going to lose. Cannon. I don't like the cannon. <laughs> oh, wait, you don't like the cannon. This is all chaos. Welcome back to College Crossfire. I am your host, Gardner Minshew. We have a great panel tonight. Should be a great show. Let's introduce them. First base, Antonio Brown. Antonio, how you doing? I'm doing great, Gardner. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, first of all. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I, I appreciate your booze. I'm in the middle of working on an assignment, actually, for my online college courses at Central Michigan, which is uh, way better than UT, by the way. Central Michigan Online is where it's at. So I might zone out and work on this for a little bit, if that's OK. All right, all right. We'll, we'll, try, and keep you, we'll try and keep you focused. But I appreciate the hard work you're putting in, Antonio. Thank you. And on second base, we have a surprise appearance from Spider-Man himself. Spider-Man, how's your day going? Uh, my day's going great. You know, it's been kind of a slow day, but I have an appointment at around um, 9.45 as I check my watch here uh, to, uh, you know, save a couple more lives. So uh, I guess I'll just have to get out of here as soon as the show's over and do All right. that. We'll try and keep it quick for yeah. you. And the king of clock management himself might be able to help you. Andy uh, Reid. Andy, how are you doing? You know, you got a big showdown against the Minnesota Vikings this weekend. How, how, how are you doing this week? Pretty good. Uh, I cut off a chicken head, had it run around, and it predicted that we're going to win this week. <laughs> all right. That's what I like to hear. That's a little spooky, but all right. We got a great show. Let's jump right in. We had a Freaky Friday situation this Saturday in Fort Worth with Sam Ellinger looking like a, a, a frayed freshman throwing four interceptions and TCU quarterback freshman Max Duggan looking like a seasoned veteran. Duggan threw for a career-high 273 yards in the Horned Frogs 37-27 win. So what went wrong for Texas against TCU? Anybody can jump, jump in. I mean, where do you start, really, Gardner? I mean, it's hard. The secondary, of course, wasn't great as they have been in previous games, but it's hard to pin that on them. They are down to second and third stringers. And, but Sam Ellinger... He threw four interceptions. That's four turnovers. And turnovers, they changed the outcome of games. And he's looked like I haven't seen him before, which is he looks spooked out there from the TCU defense. He looked like Sam That's Darnold spooked. a couple weeks ago seeing ghosts. <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe it's because of Halloween right around the corner. I don't know what it is with quarterbacks seeing ghosts. But all I know is uh, if I was on TCU, I'm way better than any of the TCU receivers. But if I was on TCU, I could be catching those <laughs> touchdowns. I could tell you that much. Wow, I mean, I mean, absolutely, Sam Ellinger did not look like himself. Uh, what about you guys? Um, I mean, <clears throat> I agree Sam didn't have an ideal game, but throughout this cor the course of the season, especially over the last few weeks or so, Sam hasn't really had that much help. I mean, especially if you go back to the OU game, I mean, he was let down by his O-line, by his defense, by his receivers dropping passes. And for the most part, Sam has had a very good season. He's, he's actually, I think, before this game, maybe had two picks the entire season. And going back to last season, he's maybe had like three, so he hasn't thrown a lot. So he did have one bad game, but he's not going to have great games. And he, I mean, he's, he's going to have some uh, not strong games. And I think this is just a situation where all the other flaws of the team all caught up with them. And then when Sam doesn't have a great game at this point with this team, it's not going to end up well. And I think that's what happened. Yeah, so just like a perfect storm of unfortunate situations. Andy, what do you think? Uh, I think not only Sam, but also the defense. I understand that we have a lot of people uh, injured right now. However, that's no excuse for bad tackling. I mean, my mind keeps going back to that play at the end of, or nor towards the end of the second quarter when, we could when they could have forced the safety, but there were two or three missed tackles. It was terrible, and they got the first down. That, that's just inexcusable. Yeah, so just maybe not disciplined. A uh, young team that just couldn't wrap up. I mean, it's been a plague for the Texas defense all year so far. Absolutely. So, all right, after the first question, Antonio, starting with three, 
Spider-Man coming in hot, starting with four, and Andy, you're starting with three. So, Halloween special, we give out candy. Spider-Man, I know you don't like Snickers. Here's some M&M's. Right. <laughs> go, go you. ahead. All right, moving on to the next question. All of Texas is playing the blame game with fans on Twitter blaming everyone under the sun. Coach Tom Herman came out and took responsibility on behalf of the coaching staff. But is it the coaches to blame or the players or maybe even somebody else? What do you guys think? Uh, you, go, you go ahead, Andy. Uh, it's both. I mean, as a head coach myself, uh, <laughs> it's not only a coach's responsibility, but it's also the player's responsibility to remember those basic things and to do their jobs. Jobs simply weren't done. Uh, coaches weren't preparing for the game that well. And so it's really on both the coaches and the players on this game. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Andy. Um, obviously, you know, a professional move by Coach Herman to come out and say that it was the uh, coach's fault. However, for the most part, i got to put this on the players because at the end of the day, they're the ones on the field, and the coaches aren't the ones that miss tackles. The coaches aren't the ones that draw passes. The coaches aren't the ones that give Sam zero protection. So I think, obviously, it's a mix of both, but I think you got to put it more on the players. Yeah, but this Texas team is so injured, and, I mean, this is a young team. A lot of the, a lot of the wide receivers are freshmen. You're going to blame the, those guys, too? I mean, obviously, injuries haven't helped the situation. Yeah. But, I mean, if we just, like Andy spoke about with the missed tackles and how I was speaking about, you know, some, some drop passes and lack of protection, I think that if, it falls on both. But um, some of these plays are just key plays that you should be able to make if you play college football yeah, at any, any level. Absolutely. It's tackling, catching a ball. So That's a good point, Spider-Man. Yeah. All right, Antonio? I think that, of course, it is to blame on both of them, not the coaches or the players. They're single-handedly responsible. But I feel like this game might have been more on the coaches. I feel like the play calling on both sides of the ball, really, has just been looking a little bit uninspired and sometimes straight up questionable. And I can say that as a former college and NFL wide receiver, <laughs> of course. <laughs> there was one play that sticks in my mind. It was a third and long, and it was deep in the fourth quarter. And we could have made a, or Texas could have made a stop that could we could have got Texas could have gotten the ball back and ran down for a score. And instead, they sent an all-out blitz towards Dugan, and he just lofted it over, got the catch, got the first down, which set up the touchdown to ice the game. And I feel like with the secondary as soft as it is, I don't know why they were calling that play. Yeah, but you have a depleted secondary. If you sit back in coverage, they're just going to make a play anyway, so you got to put pressure on the quarterback or something. But I'm going to go, Andy, you're going to win this point. You got uh, It's at five for Antonio, six for Spider-Man, and six for Andy. But Andy, you're gonna get, you're gonna win this point, this round. I agree. I mean, you can't put blame on, on either. It's blame all around, and so, and especially with the injuries, this team does need to do better at tackling. But there are some reasons, maybe not excuses, but there are reasons to why Texas played that bad against TCU. Moving on, the AP poll has a new number one this week with LSU jumping over Alabama. However, if you read the rest of the list you won't find the Texas Longhorns. After their loss to TCU, Texas fell out of the top 25 for the first time this year. Is this an overreaction or a deserved slip out of the rankings? Anybody can jump in. I'm going to say that's a bit of an overreaction, and the reason I say that is because if you really look at this season, they've only had one loss where they weren't the favorites, and that was TCU. They weren't favored against LSU. They weren't favored against Oklahoma. Um, so the, all the games they were supposed to win, with the exception of TCU, they took care of business. They did have one a down game against TCU. I understand in college football, you know, the weight of one loss, especially against a team that you're supposed to beat, is a lot greater than, is, is great. But I will say there's an overreaction just because at the end of the day, they've taken care of business in most games they're supposed to, with the exception of this one TCU game. Well, Spider-Man, you're forgetting about the Kansas game just two weeks ago. I mean... It was an embarrassment for Texas, uh, almost losing to Kansas. And the AP uh, committee must have been taking that into consideration as well. That's a good point, Andy. I think that I'm not surprised at the ranking that te Texas is unranked, rather, because they do have three losses, and two of those losses are against the two, or two of the ten best teams in college football. Both of the losses was against unranked TCU. And again, like Andy said, they almost lost to Kansas. Who should they, they should have no business almost losing to Kansas. I feel like, while I don't know if I support the decision to put Texas outside of the top 25, I can understand the poll's placement. 
Yeah, I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself, Antonio. I mean, you can't blame the AP poll people for pushing Texas out of the top 25. You have three losses if you're Texas. That doesn't look good. Um, and you, you made a good point, Spider-Man. Like two of the top really good teams they lost to, but, I mean, maybe, maybe not fully deserved, but you can't blame the AP poll. So, uh, Antonio, you're at eight. Spider-Man, you're at nine. And Andy, you're at eight. But Antonio, you won this question, oh, so you're gonna get a Snickers. You're gonna get. Thank you. You thank look you. hungry. You don't look like yourself. Yeah. You, you've no. changed. Yeah. You've changed, yeah. Antonio. You don't look like yourself anymore. I don't change. I stay the same. <laughs> All same right. Entity. Texas has a much-needed second bye week this Saturday, and with Kansas State fresh off an upset win over Oklahoma, what does Texas need to focus on improving this week? Anybody can join. Uh, as Tom Herman said in the press conference on Saturday. They got to go back to basics. We mm. touched on it previous or earlier in the program, the tackling, the not dropping balls, just getting those basic techniques, perfecting them for this game against Kansas State, who put up better numbers against Oklahoma than Texas did. Uh, it's going to be a really challenging game for Texas, uh, and it'll be interesting to see what the outcome is. Can you repeat that? I'm just taking notes for my class. <laughs> All right, Antonio, Focus on think? fundamentals. Got that. All right, thank you. What do you think, Antonio? I think that while I do feel like the, the, the defense, in particular the secondary, is probably the most pressing issue, there's not really much that you can do to work on that in the offseason because, again, they are down to backups and third stringers. I just feel like you hope that the starters can get healthy enough in order to be able to start, of course. I feel like that there's two things that they probably should be working on. One of them is the offensive line. I feel like a big reason that Sam Ellinger threw four interceptions is because he was pressured a lot. He had to scramble. And he has proven that he can pick up first downs with his legs, but you can't run on every single play. And, of course, more inspired play calling from the offensive defensive coordinators. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing is get healthy. And yeah. that's not something you can really teach, but it's definitely important. So, Spider-Man? I actually think that this Kansas State defeat of Oklahoma is really good for Texas, and not just because it was an Oklahoma loss. I'm talking about in the sense that, you know, Texas kind of under coach Tom Herman always has an issue where they play down to their competition. And them seeing Kansas State beat Oklahoma, I think this is going to cause Texas to maybe take Kansas State a little more seriously. Or I don't know exactly what the issue is, why they always play up and down to their competition, but I actually think that the fact that Kansas State beat Oklahoma gives Texas a better shot at beating Kansas State this week. All right, maybe taking them a little bit more serious. All right, so at the end of the first period, we got the score. Antonio Brown at 12. Spider-Man, you're at 11. Andy Reid, you are also at 11. And... Antonio Brown, you won your second question yes, of the day. Thank All you right. so much. Good job, Antonio. 12, like my last quarterback. All right. When we come back, the panel discusses Texas volleyball and the Warriors' very slow start. Welcome Woo! back to College Crosswire. Before we get back to business, let's check the scoreboard. Antonio Brown, you're at 12. Spider-Man, you're at 11. And Andy <laughs> Reid, you are at Andy. 11. Thank you, thank you. Last Wednesday, the Texas Longhorns dominated the, at the time, number one Baylor Bears and swept them out of Gregory Gym. Yeah. Now Texas is number one, but were you surprised at just how bad Texas beat the rivals from Waco? I would say I was a little bit surprised at how much of a route it ended up being, but I'm not surprised at the way Texas was dominant because Texas, I think, was just a better overall team than Baylor. They have, you know, they have better attackers at the front of the net that can jump a little bit higher, spike the balls a little bit harder, as well as their chemistry, you know, especially, especially their chemistry towards the back end of the court is a little bit better. Baylor kind of just fell apart mentally. I mean, they weren't communicating well. They weren't even getting the balls. Over. They, were, they were letting balls drop. They were hitting balls one time and then not even able to get a second hit because they were in communication about who was going to hit it. So I think Texas not only had the physical edge, but they certainly had a mental edge over Baylor. Uh, I'm not surprised in the least. Uh, people, had a, people were very concerned about Texas after that loss to Rice over a month ago. But they've been able to prove time and time again, win after win after win, 
that they are the number one team and leading up to this game and they went out there played physically and managed to get the win over Baylor they deserve the number one spot uh, they've improved a lot since that Rice defeat uh, and it's served them well yeah yeah I'm a little bit surprised at the outcome of the game of course I had faith in the Longhorns but I wasn't 100 percent sure that they were going to win the game but not only to win the game and to sweep all three I feel like that's very impressive Baylor's volleyball team isn't really Baylor's football team. I feel like people are overrating Baylor's football, but that's not here nor there. They're not pushovers. And for UT's volleyball to go into that gym and take care of business the way they did, it's really, oh, hang on. I got an email from my professor real quick. Let me just respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second, Gardner. All right, all right. So, Andy, you're going to get the points. I think, I think people definitely overreacted to the Rice loss. This Texas team is good and has been good all year. So, Andy, you're going to get the point. You're now at 12. I'm sorry about that, Spider-Man. I know you don't like Snickers. You're right, I don't. Sorry. keeping away from me. <laughs> All right. Anthony Rendon was the Astros' worst nightmare last night in the Nationals' Game 6 oh. victory. Rendon went 3 for 4 with 5 RBI and a homer to help Washington force a Game 7. The winner of tonight's game will be the world champions. As we have seen, anything can happen in the World Series. So what are the X factors tonight for Game 7? Uh, I think one of the main X factors is Max Scherzer being on the mound for the Nationals. Uh, he uh, he's an ace for the for Washington, uh, and he unfortunately wasn't able to play on Sunday when they lost. But I think him being able to be on the mound tonight will prove them well, especially in a World Series where the home team is the loser. Yeah, and I mean Scherzer, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, was scratched from Game Five, mm -hmm. and that was a game that the Nationals really needed to win to not allow Houston to get back into the series. So, uh, yeah, Scherzer is a big, uh, big factor. Yeah, I feel like I agree with Andy over here that Max Scherzer is a big component of how this game is going to go. This is a guy that just three days ago, I think, he could barely even move his arm because of his nerve pain. And now he's going to be out there on the mound. And I feel like if anyone can come back from that kind of, you know, What's the word I'm looking for, Gardner? That kind of injury, I guess. And in this little time, it's going to be Scherzer. But I don't know. I feel like if he can hold up, then the Nationals can probably win this game. I also do think that it'll be interesting who's going to close for Houston, whether or not it'll be Garrett Cole and how he'll do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the World Series, closers and relief pitchers, that all that stuff goes out the window. Spider-Man? Well, I, I agree with these two about how uh, the importance of Max Scherzer. But I think what is going to determine the outcome of this game is the way each starter pitches. And the reason I say that is because we've seen in this World Series, we've seen a lot of blowouts, and we've seen some starting pitchers of high caliber not play up to their expectations. So I think that this is going to be a game where I think one starter is going to come out great, the other might fade under the pressure. I don't know who it's going to be, but I think it is going to happen to one of them. So I think whichever starting pitcher performs better is going to be the one that comes out with the victory. Yeah, Spider-Man, you're going to get the point. I mean, starter, starting pitching is so important in the playoffs. <laughs> okay, you're ready for yeah. your three musketeers. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> All right, Spider-Man, you're going to get the point. Now everybody's tied at 12, so it's, it's a close game. All right, the Golden State Warriors moved into the brand-new Chase Center this year and apparently forgot who they were. After losing Kevin Durant to free agency and Clay Thompson to injury, the Warriors have played so bad that Draymond Green said, and I'm going to skip a word here, the reality is we suck right now. Are you surprised at how bad the Warriors have been so far this year? Hang on, I'm just tweeting Robert Kraft real quick. Oh my <laughs> okay, I'm done. I, I'm a little bit surprised at the Warriors' slow start. They have lost two games, but I feel like people are a little bit too quick to label them as a bad team just yet. The offseason wasn't too kind. They did lose two of their all-stars, Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson, due to free agency and injury. But that means the Warriors still have two left. Steph Curry and Draymond Green are very good players. And don't forget, they got D'Angelo Russell, too, who's also an all-star. Steve Kerr is still a good coach. And I feel like, also, it's still October. You know, the, the NBA season, it's 82 games long, and the Warriors are only three games in. So I feel like it's a little too quick to label them as a bad team just yet. Yeah, Spider-Man? Okay, am I surprised that they got blown out by the Oklahoma City Thunder? Yes. Now, am I surprised that they kind of have a slow start coming out of a season where 
They don't have Kevin Durant in their system anymore. Clay Thompson's out, and they have to incorporate someone like D'Angelo Russell who likes to handle the ball just like Steph does into the offense. No, I'm not surprised. But I think they're going to pick it up. It's just going to take some time. You know, obviously, the personnel is completely different. They're coming off a season where, you know, they made it all the way to the finals, so they're maybe a little bit fati more fatigued than, last se than uh, other teams. But I think they're going to pick it up and make it into the playoffs. Andy? I agree with these two. Look, not all of Mozart's paintings are beautiful, but at the end of the, at the, end of the day, uh, it's going to sell for a lot of money. And I think that's the same way with uh, the uh, Warriors. I think at the end of the day, they're going to be really good. Uh, and right now, they're just not showing it. Very well said, Andy Reid. I like the I like the metaphors, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Antonio Brown. You're going to get the point here. Thank I you think so much. it's. It's too quick. While I'm working on it's my too quick too. to say. It's kind of like Texas fans overreacting to Texas, in uh, t Texas fans or er, the voters overreacting to Texas volleyball losing to Rice. It's too quick to too quick to tell. So at the end of the second period, Antonio Brown, you're in the lead with 13. Spider Man and Andy Reid, you are tied at 12. Yeah. All right, great Give debate, guys. Rapid fire is coming up next. Stick around in. because it, because it is sure to get heated. All right, Woo! welcome back to College Crossfire, and welcome into Rapid Fire. Before we get the debate going, let's remind the audience of the score one more time. Antonio Brown at 13. Whoa! Thank you, thank you so much. Whoa! Not a crowd favorite, Antonio. Spider-Man and Andy Reid tied at 12. Yeah. It's a close game. Remember, in Rapid Fire, every question is worth two points. And you know what that means? It is anybody's game. <laughs> That's right. Love it for the crowd. After the Browns lost to the Patriots this week, Woo! Stephen A. Smith claimed, and I quote, the Browns don't know how to play football. <laughs> now, Stephen A. was exaggerating a little, but it got me thinking. We all know the Browns are bad and have been bad, so what should they do instead of play football? Anybody can answer. I mean, I think it's obvious. they got to have their own reality show. I mean, with uh, Baker and course. Odell and some of the other characters on this team, I mean, I just think a reality show, they'd probably, I don't know if the problem of a reality show would compare to the NFL, but um, clearly they don't know how to play football, so they might have to, you know, just be themselves and be a reality show. All right. I think that going off on a similar line there, I feel like that the Browns should do some kind of WWE wrestling event because there's a lot of very athletic men on the Browns team, and they should focus their athleticism on somewhere other than football because it's clear they can't do that. I'm speaking from experience as an NFL receiver. I'm looking at what they're doing. Me, Antonio Brown, I don't, I don't support it. But I feel like something like a Miles Garrett versus anyone really that would be entertaining for anyone to watch all right maybe WWE kind of thing Andy what do you think uh, they shouldn't play they should make like previous Cleveland teams and move out of Cleveland <laughs> oh, <laughs> spider-man as a Cleveland resident how does that make you feel I mean it hurts but LeBron got us one so <laughs> I'm good for the next 25 years all right spider-man you're gonna get the two points oh, this this team is a basket case so many characters <laughs> Spider-Man, your reflexes are a little slow sorry, today. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting up there in age. It's been, how many years has it been since my first movie? <laughs> All right. Just throw them to me. I can Go to, them. to the next question. You know we had to talk about the biggest upset in college football this week. The Kansas Jayhawks upset the Texas Tech Red Raiders Saturday after Tech blocked the would-be game-winning field goal and fumbled the ball back to Kansas. Jayhawks kicker Liam Jones wouldn't miss the second time and nailed the 32-yarder to give Kansas the win. So looking back in all of the history of sports, what is your favorite in-game blooper? Anybody can answer. Uh, for me, it'd be an early 2000s Jets-Bills game where uh, the uh, receiving team, which was the Jets, didn't know how to receive a kickoff. And so he just let the ball drop uh, and the... Uh, Bills were able to go and pick it up and score a touchdown. Yeah, that's that's a good one. The, the Jets not knowing how to how to how a kickoff works. All right, what about you guys? You're like going off in a uh, similar Jets direction. Ooh, I, you can't go past the classic Mark Sanchez butt fumble. Ooh. I mean, he he that. trademarked a new word with that butt fumble. And speaking from past experience as a previous NFL player, current online college yeah. student resident, <laughs> I can say that that was one of not only the funniest, but also the most 
inexplicable bloopers I've ever seen live. And I can say that from as being an NFL player. I'm, I'm sure you can relate, Gardner. I do. I, I can. I would never do that. Spider-Man? Okay, so there was this baseball game. I think it was in 2005. It was between the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks, right? Yeah. Duane Sanchez is on the mound. Pitches it. Luis Gonzalez. Uh, I don't remember who. I think it was Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez hits kind of like a, a weird type of ball that's like slowly going over Sanchez's head. It's like a slow motion line drive kind of. Mm -hmm. Sanchez is like, I can't reach this. What am I going to do? He takes his glove off and he throws it at the ball and he hits the ball in the air. Now, do you know what the rule for that is? No, I don't. It is an automatic triple. So we got what? three bases. <laughs> True story. Look it up. It's that is incredible. Part of the rule of detached equipment. That's what it's called. <laughs> That's incredible, but I can't. I don't know if it's if it's legit. It no, it's legit. Look at it. Go to the go to the tapes on YouTube and look at it. Where's our, our ruling? Is it legit? I it's legit. Oh, it's Spider Man, legit. you're getting the point. I know you don't like Snickers. Here's some more ribs. Yeah. All right, uh. Spider Man. That's incredible. Yes. Just something that could have been an out, at most a single, is now a triple. That's yes, that's incredible. I've yes, never sir. heard of that before. All right, <laughs> moving on. The last rapid fire question of the day. The Nationals' Gerardo Parra decided to go a little unorthodox for his walk-up song this year. Parra walked up to Baby Shark blaring through the stadium. Some fans loved it, others hated it, but pretty much everybody had the song stuck in their heads. So if you were choosing a walk-up song that you wanted to get stuck in the attendees' heads, what song would you go for? I feel like I have to choose a walkout song that reflects my own personality. Yeah. Me, Antonio Brown, as one of the greatest football players to ever play the game, I would choose I Am A God by Kanye West. <laughs> because he says, I am a god. And I feel like that, that really spoke to me as one of the best players in the league, past, present, future, anything like that. I, I can relate to that, being very godlike in my receiving abilities and just my overall personhood. I am a god. All right, all right. Um, I mean... I yeah, to, me, to me, this is pretty obvious. This has been my walk-up song uh, in TSTV Sports. I am softball too, by the way. Hips don't lie by Shakira. <laughs> obvious. No question. I love it, Spider-Man. I love it. Andy, what do you think? You know, being on this campus uh, has given me a lot of school spirit for UT. And I'd have to say my walk-up song would be The Eyes of Texas. Oh, all right, Andy. All right, Andy. Central Michigan. You Central can't, Michigan. You can't <laughs> not give the point to the eyes of Texas. <laughs> Andy, you're going to get the point. Central There's Michigan. a snicker. But Andy, that is not enough to get you the win. Oh, Spider-Man, <laughs> you are our winner tonight. <laughs> Do we have time for FaceTime? We no, we play. don't. But i got to reveal myself. Who's Spider-Man? It's him! Oh, my, oh, my goodness! Oh, what? I'm Batman. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have. Oh, that's right. all now the can time breathe. we have for tonight. Congratulations to our oh. winner, Henry. Oh, I didn't even know. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Be sure to check out College Press, Press Box every Monday at 9.30 p.m. for the latest sports news on 40 Acres. Also, tune in to 1 Sports Show. Yeah. Host my time, Spencer Robert Trudeau. And every Friday night. See you next week. <laughs>